Hello everyone. I hope all of you are fine. This is fourth video for the series of frequently asked questions in GRE and these question types and concepts are often tested. So don't miss any single video of the series. And if you find these videos helpful, like the video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you won't miss any single video of the series. So this video involves a tricky question that uses the concept of skills and skill roots. Just pause the video and try to solve this at your own. I assume that all of you have solved this by now. So this is a bit tricky question because sometimes the student confuse when to consider a positive root and when to consider a negative root. So before getting into this question, let's see the common scenarios in which this question could be asked. So basically there are four common scenarios. So the first scenario in which we are taking the scalar of variable and equating to some constant. So in this scenario we have variable x and constant 9. So x square is equal to 9. Based on the basic algebra, quadratic always have two roots. x can be 3 or x can be minus 3. So that when we scale that result 9. So in this scenario, we always have two roots. We can also get this by some sort of algebraic manipulation. We have x square is equal to 9. If I subtract 9 from both sides, we have x square minus 9 is equal to 0. And this can be written as x square minus 3 square is equal to 0. So basically this is in the form of a square minus b square, which is equal to a plus b into a minus b. So x minus 3 into x plus 3 is equal to 0. And equating these to 0, x could be 3 or x could be minus 3. Let's see the second scenario, which is a bit tricky scenario, in which there is a variable inside the square root. One thing everyone should be very clear that we can't have a negative number inside the square root because that will become an imaginary number which is not considered in GRE. So we will always have a non-negative number inside the square root. So the square root of a variable is always a non-negative. So that means if variable is 0, our answer is 0. Otherwise in each scenario, our answer must be a positive number. So if we consider a square root of 9, the result is a positive 3. But Shouldn't it be 3 or minus 3 as we discussed in the first scenario? To understand that, basically square root of x denotes a principal square root. x has two square roots, either positive or negative. The positive square root is basically a principal square root which is denoted by square root of x as our second scenario. And the negative square root is represented by minus square root of x. Therefore, when you take the square root of 9, in actual, you get two roots, square root of 9 which is 3 and minus square root of 9 which is minus 3. But in GRV, whenever you see square root of x, this will always be referring to the positive square root or principal square root of the number. That's why square root of 9 is always positive 3. We can't have a negative value of any square root of variable in GRV. Now let's see the third scenario, which is a relatively easy scenario, in which we are taking the square root first and then the square. And remember, this will always be equal to the variable involved, which is non-negative variable. So x has a square root, so it will must be a non-negative number. When it is squared again, the square root sign will cancel and you are left with the same variable which is involved in that. This is relatively simple. Now let's see the last scenario and the tricky scenario. That is in first in which we are first taking the square and then taking the square root. And the answer of that will always be the absolute value of x. So the question arises: shouldn't it be just x? Why we are considering the absolute value? Because this is again involving the principal square root. Out, outside we have a square root. So that's why this is involving the principal square root concept. First you need to take the square of x, then you need to take the square root. And if we consider negative square root, so that will be written as minus square root of x square which is not considered in this case. So irrespective of whether x was initially positive or negative, square root of x square is always be positive. And to make that positive, we need to consider the absolute value of x. Now why absolute value? Because initially x could be positive or negative but the final answer must be positive because we are considering a principal square root. To make that positive we need to consider the absolute value 
just like in this when we are having a initially positive value the result is positive x and when we are considering a negative value to make that positive answer we need to multiply that with a negative number negative 1 that's why we get a positive value and if that is 0 the result is 0 so this is fourth scenario in which we are considering the answer as the absolute value of the variable to get a non-negative answer so here are just some quick examples to get you an idea about what we discussed so far this is second scenario square root of 4 is always positive this is first scenario in which there is a variable square and equating to some constant so that could be positive and negative root this is fourth scenario and that is always positive this is again fourth scenario we are getting a positive answer this is third scenario and again we are getting what is uh, present and that is a non-negative number which is 4 so this is fourth scenario in which we are taking the square first and then the square root which is equal to 6 so in this scenario x square uh, whole square root is equal to 6 so final answer is positive absolute value so initial x could be positive or negative if x is positive in that scenario quantity a is greater because we are having a positive power and quantity b is having a negative power and in second scenario if we consider x as negative in that scenario quantity b is greater because quantity b will have a positive power and quantity a will have a negative power so in first scenario quantity a is greater in second scenario quantity b is greater that's why the answer to this is option d i hope you find this video helpful Hope to see you next video. Thank you.